Hi, I'm Kristen from the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance, and today we're going to create a hand pollinator using the design process. The design process is used by inventors and engineers and helps people think creatively to solve a problem, and you can use it to tackle almost any task. The steps of the design process include identifying the problem, brainstorming ideas, designing and building a prototype, testing and evaluating, redesigning, and finally sharing a solution. Here's some of the supplies you might need today. I've got some pepper or some glitter to act as pollen, and then I've got a variety of building materials. And today I've got some craft sticks and toothpicks, pipe cleaners, feathers, pom-poms, cotton balls, tissue paper, toilet paper, tape, and a paper plate or some paper to act as your flower. I like a paper plate better just because it tends to hold all the mess in one spot. Now, if you don't have these materials at your house, that's okay. You can use pretty much anything that you can find around the house. And if you don't have a craft stick, then you can just go out in the yard and find a regular stick. You don't need these specific supplies to do this activity, but you probably will need some tape, and that can be masking tape, scotch tape, or duct tape. So just gather a variety of materials that you'd like to explore with. Our problem today is to figure out how to help pollinators pollinate plants. Pollinators are animals such as bees, butterflies, bats, and hummingbirds. And they help spread pollen from one flower to another to help them grow. Without pollinators, we wouldn't have food to eat, so they are very important to our ecosystem. But you might have heard that pollinators' numbers are dwindling, and we're losing them due to things like habitat loss and pesticide use. So today, we're going to see if we can help our plants grow and help out the pollinators by designing our own hand pollinator. To brainstorm some ideas, I'm going to look at some pollinators to figure out what makes them especially useful in spreading pollen. Scientists and engineers often look at nature to see how it works, and then they apply what they learn to man-made solutions. So for instance, I've seen um, some robots that the military has developed that look like they have legs of a dog or a mule to help carry heavy loads. So we're going to look at what's special about these pollinators to help with our design. One thing I noticed about both bees and butterflies is that they both have six legs. So I'm wondering if perhaps those legs help with the pollen distribution. So I'm going to design something that mimics their six legs. The next step is to design. And just like architects create blueprints before they begin construction, you should sketch out your ideas on paper before you start building. So let's move this out of the way. And here's my blueprint for my design. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't have to be an artist. You just need to get your ideas down on paper. And for my prototype, I'm going to use a craft stick and I'm going to use six toothpicks to act as legs. And I'm just going to tape it to the craft stick and we'll see how that works. So after you uh, create your blueprint, then it's time to build your prototype. So here I've got my prototype. He's got uh, the craft stick, tape, and toothpicks for legs. It does not look pretty, it does not look fancy, and that's okay. The great thing about prototyping is that we tend to use inexpensive materials, so um, it's okay if it doesn't work out the first time, you can always uh, redesign and try something new. But first we have to test it and see how well it works. So I've got two paper plates with a flower drawn on it. The first one, um, I'm going to put glitter in the center and that's going to act as the pollen. And on the second paper plate, I've drawn another flower and I've labeled it test one because as good engineers, we're not just going to go with our first design. We're going to test multiple times just like engineers do. So after you build your prototype, uh, we're going to test it out. So here's my pollinator. He's flying to the first flower and he's landing gently in the pollen. And as the pollinators like bees are getting nectar from the flower, they're also picking up pollen. And so I'm just pressing very gently because bees and butterflies don't weigh very much. So don't press down too hard. So he's in the flower getting nectar and hopefully pollen. And then he's going to fly over to the second plate 
and we're going to make him land gently again all over the flower to see if any pollen is transferred. All right. Uh-oh, look at my plate. I don't know if you can see, but my prototype transferred zero pollen. This did not work. This was not a successful design. That's okay because the next part of the design process, after we evaluate it, my evaluation is it did not work. The next step is to redesign. So I'm going to go back and think some more. And I'm thinking when I look at a picture of a bee, I notice that it does have six legs, but I also notice that it's covered in hair. There's tiny little hairs on the body and even some on the legs. So I'm wondering if perhaps those hairs help them pick up pollen. So I'm thinking I'm going to change my design. And I want to do something that will mimic the hairs. So I've kept the similar design. I still have the craft stick and I still have six legs. But this time um, I used chenille stems or crap, uh, pipe cleaners to make the legs because they have tiny little, I'm not sure what they're made out of, but it feels like tiny little hairs all over them that I'm hoping will act like a bee's legs. So let's test it out. So I'm going to fly my pollinator over to the plant. He's going to gently get some nectar and hopefully he's picking up pollen at the same time. And then I've got a second flower labeled test two. We'll come over here and land it on very gently again and see if any pollen transfers. Oh, and what do you know? Look at that. It may be hard to see in the video, but there are tiny specks of glitter or pollen on this plate. So what do you think? Which design worked better? Was it my first test that had zero glitter, zero pollen transferred, or my second one that had uh, maybe 20 specks transferred? I think my second design worked a little bit better, but I bet I could redesign this prototype to make it even better. Remember, don't settle for your first design. Uh, the first design is very rarely the best design and engineers and scientists will redesign multiple times to come up with the best solution. Share your ideas and collaborate with others to come up with the strongest and the best solution possible. Thank you for joining us today. I can't wait to see what you come up with. You can share your designs and creations with us on social media by tagging us at, at Tulsa STEM. This activity came from Engineering is Elementary, and you can view their curriculum at EIE.org. And if you'd like some more STEM at home activities, please vis visit us on our website at TulsaSTEM.org. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time.